Moin Moin, my name is Robert and welcome back to The Dunian. So, after watching the first episode, I wanted to show you a little bit the things I already prepared before starting building the real Hermes. Um, I already positioned four communication sets around Kerbin in somewhat geostationary orbits. So the geostationary height of an orbit in, at Kerbin is uh, around 2870 kilometers. They are all pretty close so they should stay at least somehow in position and they are already prepared as a kind of proof of concept. Uh, first little blocks uh, for the Hermes um, which is actually consisting out of three building blocks. So um, the three building blocks you can see here is in the end uh, the uh, truster block which has all the iron drives on there um, which are already functional as you can see and then is followed by a section with two of the medium-sized nuclear reactors and a shitload of heat radiators and then another section with a large size a nuclear reactor and a xenon gas tank. Um, so I'm spinning this ship a little bit around so you can see what's actually happening there in the sun. Um, so this is what I already prepared because I wanted to see for myself before I start recording um, if I'm even able to to position that big uh, segments in orbit. You can see we are sporting 11 ion drives which are using the power from the reactors and the xeon from the tanks and this was the first section pretty much with an own uh, uh, remote control guidance unit and I already prepared some of the strut connectors so I can later connect them with the strut connectors on the other side to stabilize the ship as soon as it's getting too long and starting to wobble uh, if we fire the engines. So in the next section you can see two medium sized nuclear reactors with uh, quite a lot of heat radiators um, because those little funny guys are producing a lot of heat when really running and producing electricity and to get rid of this and also to somehow mimic the, the, the optics of the Hermes which also had a lot of radiators, um, I added them here. So for redundancy reasons and just to make sure we really 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 have enough uh, electricity, we have another big size, so 3.5 meters, a 3.75 meters reactor here. Um, accompanied by uh, two of the RCS uh, tanks with a lot of monopropellant and those little truster blocks um, from the modular rocket system um, which is quite stock like but gives me the option to have truster blocks which can support five directions instead of four. There already is a Xeon tank. Um, the funny thing is that the reactors are producing Xeon while running so um, they are not only producing fuel but on the long term they should output at least the description said uh, some Xeon gas which I hopefully can collect in the tanks again um, to give them back to the to the ion drives so in theory after all I have read on the item descriptions this should enable us to start with some Xeon or start with filled up tanks um, but as we use up Xeon and a lot of electricity from the nuclear reactors they should also produce Xeon for us. To connect this stuff with the next stage I prepared three times senior docking ports. Um, when I concepted this uh, this sounded like a pretty good idea to have a very very long ship getting stabilized by three connection points when I docked the first stage, well, you will see, then it wasn't the best idea anymore. But, well, it stabilizes the ship. At least this is the idea. On the long term, we will see how it behaves under, under real load. So, the reactor is already spinning up and generating some heat, but stabilizes at 100% currently. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, as we currently have no real power load on the ship so there's 
nothing consuming that much electricity as the generators are are actually generating so we have quite a lot of electric capacity up there so we should be fine with this and before we proceed with building the Hermes we need to do one other thing um, because of communication so as I'm using the remote tech mod um, we have a like Kerbin geostationary satellite network already but there's one weakness when thinking about um, going to Duna with for example a remote controlled craft like the return module um, which will be delivered in before without any pilots this is the moon pretty much because or the man in in our case um, because it can happen that in some cases when we leave for for Duna um, the man can actually block a side, line of sight to to Kerbin so what this satellite is actually intended for is to be on a polar orbit around the man um, always facing Kerbin so that if it happens that the man is actually blocking line of sight between our spacecrafts or and Kerbin we can use this satellite as a relay um, to still have a, a guidance connection back to Kerbin so this for I modified the the Kerbin near satellites just a little bit so I took off the common neutrons on the side and exchange them against the little dishes I deployed just a few seconds ago um, because they have more range uh, available so we can actually hook them up to the different satellites um, while transferring over to the MAN um, I switch between different COM sets which are currently available um, with both of the dishes so just to make sure we don't lose any contact so currently we have connection to the Kerbin Spaceport or the Kerbin Space Center and one connection to I think Kerbin Sat 3 it was um, to have redundant uh, connections and don't get out of control as soon as we lose line of sight with the Kerbin Space Center. Um, then I prepare a little maneuver to get this thingy transferred over to the MUN um, and yeah pretty much do the maneuver. So remote communication or radio communication over that long distances as to Duna can become quite interesting with remote tech as you see on the left upper corner there is a f uh, is a field with D plus 00 .30. this is the actual delay we have because of speed of light so uh, radio communication is only traveling at the speed of light and this will become very interesting uh, on long distances because all the commands we send to remote tech will get delayed by well the speed of light so in our real solar system it pretty much means that depending on the current position of earth and mars um, this delay varies between four minutes and 24 minutes so it's quite long if it happens so in average somewhere around 10 12 minutes so I expect this to be a little bit lower in the Kerbin scale uh, solar system because well everything is smaller here uh, even the Kerbits are um, so I expect something between 2 to I don't know 8 perhaps 10 minutes something like that delay when having a uh, radio communication with Kerbin but this also means a direct uh, control of probes will become problematic um, when talking about orbital probes things are quite fine because you have time to prepare your maneuver um, you can do a, in worst case you do twice the orbit um, because you are too late with issuing your command um, but there is something um, which scares me for the future so I don't have a solution for this yet but I hope we will come up with one um, is how can we land the Duna return module in before because the first one needs to be landed remotely um, if you remember what the Martian said was um, the pilot of an Ares mission is landing the return module of the next mission remote controlled when they are in the orbit of Mars um, so 
I have no idea what this means for the first Duna Return module because there is no previous Ares mission. So I decided to actually land the first Return module um, via remote control. So controlled from Kerbin or controlled via a probe core. Um, and this will become interesting with a few minutes of delay in, in the control. So um, yeah, we need to concept something which is pretty much able if we prepare anything to land by itself. So I have no idea yet how, but well, there will be solutions. So while I talk quite a lot, the probe finally arrived at the MUN and what I prepare here is another maneuver to get into an orbit. What I actually tried was to get into a like stationary orbit. Um, which is given in a height which I was not able to accomplish without leaving the orbit again. So I play around a little bit, but then see that it's not possible to actually get an orbit in that height. So I decide to go for the best available height. And just to make sure that the MUN really is no problem when communicating with Kerbin. When I plan a maneuver, I'm not quite sure if the point where I do the maneuver node will actually be available to communicate with Kerbin. So what I prepare here is the flight computer to execute the maneuver for me. Um, because if I program it right now, um, I can be sure that even if I have no uh, radio communications available with Kerbin, the flight computer will do my maneuver. So it's pretty close and well, as I go there with uh, time acceleration, I recognize, well, it will work to do it by hand uh, or manual, but um, well, it's already programmed, so I leave it to the flight computer. Also to get used to the principle of using the flight computer if things happen within uh, the shadow of non-available communication. So same thing pretty much on the other side to circularize the orbit. And as you see now, the orbit w becomes clear of the MUN. So wherever the satellite will be, it will always has line of sight to Kerbin and it will always be reachable from the outside, even if the MUN is blocking Kerbin. So this is pretty much our backup we have here and now we can activate our dish and point it to Duna already. So this one is actually prepared. So you all have been waiting for, let's start building the first module of the Hermes. The first module of the Hermes will be our life support section, not with the actual life support. So, uh, well, it, it supports the life support uh, how is it named? Devices? Well, so what I don't want to do with this section is like plug there like tons of food and water and oxygen. Um, but this section is pretty much for storing electricity and for, um, well, converting used up resources back to usable resources. So um, when talking about the two most common things you can actually uh, convert back. It's pretty much um, oxygen and it's water. Um, oxygen, oxygen first, well, it's quite simple. When you breath, you breath out uh, CO2. So this contains what we are searching for. So it's O2. The only thing we need to split up from is uh, the carbon. So um, you can see I prepare the batteries just to make sure we don't run out of energy in, in any scenario where we have to spin up a, a generator in before. And what I use here is the carbon extractor. The carbon extractor pretty much takes the carbon dioxide and then splits the oxygen from it. So because the oxygen is the stuff we want to have to, well, still be able to breathe. So um, this is one of the first modules and this is consuming quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of energy. And this module in this size is capable of supporting nine Kerbals. So we are fine because we want to support a crew of six. And the other thing is a water purifier, which, well, you see it on the pictures 
tr converts wastewater to fresh water at a given rate so we don't need to take that much oxygen and fresh water with us in the ship and even have some abilities to well make a longer mission than planned because we can reuse our our resources again so this is pretty much all that this section should be doing and here you see i prepare the well triple docking facilities so as i already mentioned before i thought it would be a very very smart idea to do this um to get things more stable um but well um it has some implications on docking things together uh primarily it gets more complicated so yeah so well if you ever feel like giving this a try just try it it's it's quite fun docking free docking ports at the same time especially if you have rockets with uh well a weight around 18 tons i guess we have currently um yeah it's quite a lot of fun just give it a try but you will see so talking about the rocket i prepare here this will later become my pretty much standard delivery rocket so it's a 3.5 meter tank uh, 3.75 meter tank and the hound engine because it's not that heavy with five tons and it's having enough push to actually bring us somewhere so we have nearly a tvr of one with this and well then i had some problems finding the right decoupler size so um, don't mind me doing this. Uh, I will exchange it in a minute against the real one and Below there I put a lot of fuel tanks um, Well also the big ones and combine them with the big mammoth uh, Engine because well this one is one of the few engines having enough trust to to push that much load up into an orbit um, without too much struggle and still some control. Well, last things last, we need still some control with uh, RCS thruster blocks and we also need some kind of uh, radio communication connection because, well, it's a probe core and it's remote tech, so we can't simply start without having a connection to the Kerbin Space Center or a communication satellite or whatever. So, well, at the last inspection, I finally recognized that I should use some of them antennas. So I, well, this became pretty much my standard. I use one reflectron for the first initial uh, launch because it has, I think, like 500 kilometers of range, um, which is enough to get into the first uh, suborbital uh, direction. And then common neutrons um, after that because they have quite a good range, range uh, something about I don't remember like five million kilo, uh, five million meters or something like that well so i decided to launch and well little cut here as you see i decided to put on some wings on there because i recognized well if you have that heavy load going to the atmosphere it will spin otherwise so these ones are stabilizing my flight and you can see now that the first part the life section or the life support section part is on its way to the Hermes to start the docking maneuver and this is pretty much where our second episode is ending today I know that we didn't do that much for the Hermes yet um, but I just wanted to show you what preparations I already did so you see how well quite complex it is um, if you get somewhere like at least near to um, real dependencies you have like communications like uh, using oxygen using food using water so i hope you enjoyed this episode and i welcome you back to the next one where we'll start assembling these parts in orbit thank you for watching my name is robert goodbye